H.R. 535, the PFAS Action Act of 2019, is a comprehensive package of strategies to regulate PFAS chemicals, clean up contamination, and protect public health. PFAS are an urgent threat to public health. They're toxic, persistent, and being found in the environment across the country. These forever chemicals have long been linked with adverse health effects, including cancer, immune system effects, infertility, impaired child development, high cholesterol, and thyroid disease. Mr. Chairman, the EPA has known about these risks for decades and has allowed this contamination to spread. Last year, EPA announced its PFAS action plan. It was woefully inadequate, and since that time, we've learned that EPA is not even keeping the weak commitments it made in that plan. The EPA failed to meet key end-of-the-year 2019 deadlines. It failed to produce a regulatory determination uh, in drinking water, and it failed to produce hazard determinations for chemicals under Superfund, and it failed to initiate reporting under the toxic release inventory. The Trump administration is failing hundreds of impacted communities, and Congress must act for communities like Hoosick Falls, New York, Parchment, Michigan, Parkersburg, West Virginia, and far too many more. We need to act on behalf of states like my own, New Jersey, that are doing everything they can, adopting protective state drinking water standards, pursuing natural resource damage cases, but facing strong opposition from federal agencies under the Trump administration. There have been over 500 detections of PFAS in drinking water and groundwater sources in New Jersey. And this is simply... Gentlemen will suspend. House will be in order. Members are advised to take their conversations off the floor. Gentlemen's recognized. And this is simply unacceptable, Mr. Chairman. It's time for Congress to take action and use every tool available to stop the flow of PFAS pollution into our environment and our bodies. And that's exactly what the PFAS Action Act does. This bill requires EPA to immediately designate two PFAS chemicals as hazardous substances under Superfund, the two most studied of the PFAS chemicals. And EPA is committed to make this designation in their action plan last year, but has failed to fulfill that promise. The legislation requires that over a five-year period, EPA review all other PFAS chemicals and decide whether to list them under Superfund. During that five years, the bill will require comprehensive health testing of all PFAS chemicals. This is a really important point. You may hear my colleagues talk today about the need to base decisions on science, and this bill will generate that science. The two chemicals will be regulated up front because we already have the science on them, and other PFAS will be regulated if over the next five years the science concludes that they're hazardous. The bill also includes a moratorium on any new PFAS during that same five-year period, and this will provide EPA the time it needs to ensure it has enough science to really evaluate new PFAS. H.R. 535 also requires a drinking water standard that will cover at least the two chemicals and others at EPA's discretion. Importantly, the drinking water standard will have to protect public health, including the health of vulnerable populations, such as pregnant women, infants, and children. And because treating drinking water to remove PFAS is expensive, the bill includes grants for water utilities. Now, Mr. Chairman, this bill includes a voluntary PFAS-free label for cookware, which may be expanded through amendments to include additional categories of consumer products. This label will empower consumers to take steps to protect themselves from exposure to PFAS. And the bill requires guidance for first responders to help them minimize their exposure to PFAS chemicals. This is important because PFAS is commonly found in firefighting foams. Taken together, this is a serious, comprehensive, and reasonable bill that should garner strong bipartisan support. I ur urge my colleagues to support this bill. I want to particularly thank uh, Chairman Tonko uh, for all that he did to put together this package. And of course, the sponsor of the package is Ms. Dingell from Michigan, who's faced so many problems in your home state, Mr. Chairman, uh, where Ms. Dingell is also uh, you know, uh, so much involved. And uh, the bill includes a number of uh, pieces of legislation before our committee by members of the Energy and Commerce Committee, as well as other members uh, of this body. So with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.